Okay, so we have just come back from a long weekend. I'm out here looking at the garden, and I was like, might as well do a garden tour while I'm out here. So, I'm walking through, uh, seeing what crazy stuff happened over the weekend while we wasn't here. Uh, getting some things trained up to the cattle panels, getting things harvested because, you know, it's been two or three days since I've been out here. Um, so, I want to take you along as we walk through the garden, and I'll let you see how things are shaping up. We're actually going to start right here at the fence um, at the, the entry gate that I usually come in. We usually start on the other side in the in the berry patch over on that side, but I'm actually going to start over here because that's where I'm at. Um, so let's walk through. This will be the first time you guys have seen the cattle panels actually up um, and they look really good. You'll start to see my vision of um, kind of how I had it laid out and a couple of mistakes I made. <laughs> So let's walk through um, the first little section here, which is the cattle panels. So as we walk in the gate here, the first thing you see is this set of cattle panels here. Now right here, we have some butternut squash and you're thinking, why are you trellising them? Well, this is part of the vertical gardening that I'm kind of doing with my squashes this year, except for my yellow and zucchini. But the butternut squash, I'm just going to kind of tie and let them go up because my beds are so small. These are like 24 inch beds right here, but they're so small. I don't want everything to spill out into the walkways and kind of take over. So we ended up having three, one, two, and three of the butternut squash right here on the end. Right next door, by the way, this is what these look like. We just have these up. Um, right next door is the cuca melons or sour Mexican um, Mexican sour gherkins. So these will be the cuca melons and these are already probably almost chest high to me. And then we've got some on this side. I've got about eight plants, so we'll see how they do. They will definitely fill all of this cattle panel up and I may actually have a <laughs> have to have a ladder to pick them. Okay, so here's my first mistake. Right next door here, I labeled these as cucumbers, okay? They do look like cucumbers. Yes, they do. But I will show you why. I think these are now bitter melons. <laughs> so I seeded some bitter melons, bitter melon, and these are medicinal. They're kind of a lot slower growing than the other plants I'm going to show you here in a minute. And um, these are, bitter melon are actually tropical. So it's not hot, hot, hot like they like it yet. We're still in the mid to high 80s during the day. So these are, you know, a little bit smaller than what I'm just going to show you in a second. So let's walk on around. I'll get to that bed in a minute. Here's my walkway between my two cattle panels. And here's my second set. So we've got one set there. Let me back it up a hair. One set there and one set here. So right here, um, a trombancino died. I had an extra zucchini plant, so I stuck the zucchini plant right there. Right beside it, of course, is the trombancino. These are head high on me now. And then over here, I lost another one. So I've got two plants. So I've got this tall one here. Stretched out would be taller than me. So one trombancino, one trombancino, and some loud puppies in the background fighting over some dog food. Sorry about that. And there's the zucchini plant. So here's mistake number two. I label this as bitter melon. These are actually cucumbers because I found one. <laughs> so I, uh, I now know these are cucumbers. There's three plants, no, excuse me, two plants over here, three plants over here, and they are almost head high. I've got one there that's an overachiever. He's trying to go over to the um, the next cattle panel, which I think I'm going to let him. Um, and once these get a little bit taller, I may actually let them trellis over there as well. Because my next set... Oh, and I've got... I've got a couple more under there. <laughs> so these are definitely cucumbers, not bitter melons. Right beside the cucumbers are my patty pan squash. Now, of course, these are bushes. Um, these grow like regular yellow and um, zucchini squash. So these are gonna stay low. That's why I said I am going to let these kind of take over the top up here. And these I'm gonna kind of 
I'm gonna have to get some string and I'm gonna kind of try to let them grow a little bit vertical just trying to keep them just trying to keep them out of the walkways on the outside which it would be okay over here because this is between the trellises where I'm not really gonna walk a whole lot but I still got to be able to get to them. So I don't want them to actually cover up this walkway without me being able to get to them on this side. So this is the vision of them growing up on the trellises and me being able to walk under them. You can start seeing that kind of come together here. So right next door to the cattle panels, this is my kitchen herb bed. So here we've got oregano right here on this corner and on the back corner. And then right here, I've got a zucchini plant. It's because I had an extra one, and I, I explained this in my last garden tour. I had an extra plant, but I also found some squash bugs near where I planted the other ones. So I separated one out just in case those over there get attacked. I still have one over here by itself. Fingers crossed they don't find this one over here. And then my harvest will be successful this year. Right up under that zucchini plant right there is some thyme. In the middle, we've got rosemary. In the back, this right here is sage, and then I've got another sage right there. Now these are two different kinds of sage. I didn't know that at the time because this one I got right here, I got this one from Emma's school, whereas that one I brought with us whenever we did our move. Um, and the that grass looking stuff right there is a plant I don't know the name of. It's a flower, it has red flowers on it. If anybody knows, let me know. Um, I got it from my mom who got it from my aunt and nobody remembers the name of it. So they just know it's got some pretty red flowers on it. So that's part of my pollinator um, thing over here. And then I've got a small dahlia right here. It has already bloomed one of the yellow blooms. Um, but I just got it as a pollinator over here with these herbs and the zucchini. So we went ahead and moved my elderberry plant here. Um, you see it is blooming and this elderberry we got from Sim Simply Jan Homestead. So we've got this one from Miss Jan. Thank you, ma'am. Out of five stalks, we had one survive. This is the one stalk that survived and it has put out two more shoots. So we've got three now. We've got plans to move this. It's not staying in the bucket. It's not staying here because I do know that they run by root and they will, they'll take off if we don't be careful. Um, so I don't want this here. I don't want this um, taking root and staying there. It's temporarily there. I needed it closer to the garden to be able to be watered with the rest of the garden because we had it over under the big tree and it just was not getting watered with the other stuff. And that's why it's looking a little bad. It's starting to come back. I had a bunch of yellow leaves and it just needed some water and some love. So it came into the garden for uh, a little while. And I'll show you where, that, where it's actually going to go here when we get to the other side of the garden right next door to it. I call this my mint bed or my tea bed. Um, this is where we've got pineapple sage, catnip. There's some more of that red flower. Over there is uh, lemon balm. And then this down here is peppermint. Um, I did stick a dahlia right there. And then I've got lavender in the corner. So those are just kind of beds that can take over themselves and just grow wild because they're not really going to affect anything else. So let's move now to what I call the tomato section um, where I've got some tomatoes and the squash and my peppers. All right, so here's the tea bed. Right beside it, I've got the Black Eyed Susans that are medicinal that I actually brought with me. So these are from the original homestead. Right here with it, I stuck some dill in it. So I'm just gonna let these guys have that container and just sit there and look pretty and the deal will also bloom and it'll bring uh, bees and pollinators in so i'm gonna let them sit there and do their own thing first row right here in the tomato section is going to be some mammoth jalapeno peppers they are on their way they are looking really good here's a big one down here and then we've got some over there so they're looking good now i do not top my peppers i did an experiment one year with them and they just didn't do any better <laughs> so i'm just letting them grow as is i did not top them and we will see what they get on down the line here and this is where i'm fixing to have to start harvesting some squash are my yellow squash 
And as you see, here's the problem of having small beds and these spilling out. I'm gonna try to keep them contained, but these are the yellow squash. Hopefully they're not gonna take over my walkway. And there's a lot down in there. Lots of babies, look at all those. Several in there I do have to go ahead and harvest. Like this one, this is the second plant. I've got that, oops. I've got this big one right here I've got to harvest. That's like as big as my forearm. And then I've got two more right there I've got to harvest. And then this one right here, that squash right there is gonna be the first one for this one, this plant. Um, look down there guys, I'm also seeing, I'm gonna have to start covering up this root to, or the stem to keep that plant. Sometimes the vine borers, squash bugs and all that get down in there. And that's what we're gonna try to prevent. All right, next door on the next row is going to be our basil. Look at your basil, Brandy. That's the basil plant you gave me. It's uh, almost two feet tall. And then these are Cherokee purples. So I've got three Cherokee purples. I've got marigolds and basil planted in between. And then next door are some early girls. Nope, I'm sorry. These are four romas that I got from Emma's school. One, two, three, and four. These are four roma plants. And they're a lot slower growing, but they finally made it to the cattle panel where we're able to get them tied up. Right next door behind them are early girls. And I've got one plant that is struggling. I think somehow it may have gotten topped and it just has not made it to the cattle panel yet. So we are, we are letting the sucker grow and it is, it's making its way to the cattle panel. It's almost there. Almost there. <laughs> so I, I just tied a light string around the bottom. I've been circling it around the stem until it gets to the top. And then once it gets up here, I'll use these clips right here to tie them to the cattle panel. And then this one right here is an early girl as well. So I've got two out of the three that survived. And next door to that is the um, sun sugars. So this is part of the maintenance, guys. As you come through here, pull out this grass and stuff if you have any. It will keep it at bay. All right, so we've got some sun sugars here. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest while I'm here. And then I've got plenty more coming. This plant is as tall as I am, which doesn't say much, but it is. And then next door to it, which are as tall as me as well, is, um, grapes they are tammy g's and there's several on there i need to harvest as well but I'm, my hands are getting full and i'm seeing something do you guys see what i see <laughs> i see evidence of something we've got to find it we got to find it hang on okay so i had to go get my basket so anytime you see evidence like this you have a tomato worm it will eat your plant I also see evidence. There's Poopy Doobie right there. We've got to find him. Holy cow. Look at that thing. Wow. Yeah, you're going to the chickens. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at that. That is huge. He's been eating good. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to snap this off. My gosh, I'm going to snap this off and these are going over here. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, don't give that tomato plant to the chickens. They won't eat it. They'll eat the worm. Get it, girl. Find that worm. Who's going to get it? They still ain't got it yet. <gasps> oh, she got it. She got it. Get that worm, girl. Where'd it go? I lost it. Oh, she got it. She got that worm. She is gone. <laughs> they can be so funny. Okay, so now that we fixed that problem, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish uh, harvesting the Tammy G's and then we'll continue on to the next row. We'll be right back. Okay, so I ran inside real quick to get my tripod. Okay, now we're back. <laughs> Not 
No more worms. Hopefully we fix that problem. Now I have noticed this has been the only plant that has been attacked. Um, but I see something else. This is why you have to come outside and look at your garden every single day. Every day. Or you're not going to know this stuff. Okay, so as I turned around, I see that guy. You got to go too, buddy. You can't stay here. Can't stay here. Got to go. <laughs> all right so i did see i did see some damage here so let's look over it real quick they like, to stay, they like to stay under the leaves so if you get down low and look up it's a lot better but this is another sun sugar i had four of these and so i ended up planting two here and two over there and then here's another basil this thing got so heavy it's laying down I don't see any more. Maybe that's all. And then I've got, I got one grape down here, or one sun sugar right here to get. Take a look at the plant. I don't see any signs. I don't see any damage. So I think we're good. I think we're good on that one. Another tip I have, um, just being out here in the garden all the time, I have these clips that I keep in my harvest basket. So as I'm walking around harvesting, all I have to do is just, when I see something like this that needs to be tied up, I just get my clip out. And you can do these one-handed. Just get them out, clip it up, and then you're good to go. Sometimes if you have them lower on the plant, you can actually start moving them up as they're being supported. So next door to those sun sugars, I have yellow pear tomatoes. Y'all don't forget to go check out my yellow pear tomato sauce that we make every year. And I see right here that this needs to be tied up as well. Go ahead and pop one on there. Just pop it on right there. There we go. <laughs> So down through here, these are uh, big beef. And once they start turning or blushing, um, I have to watch them for the cracks. Make sure that you don't let them crack, if at all possible. That's just a sign of, you know, water irregu irregularities, which is true. Um, and I'm seeing some damage signs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the basket, and then we're going to look. I see one culprit now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I see some dookie right there. Let's see if we can find him. Oh, there's one. Find another one. <laughs> Let's go through here and look. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. Now people, some people like to let these ripe on the vine. You can do that, and sometimes I do. Um, but I know it's fixing to rain. I don't want these to continue to bust. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and just let them ripen in the house. And I'll have eyes on them at all times. So I'll be able to see them. They're fighting over the worm. <laughs> All right, let's make sure we don't have any more. If it's not raining tonight, oh, there he is. If it's, if it's not raining tonight, we may bring you out here and go tomato worm hunting. Nope. I don't know if you guys have ever done that or not. I got a video that we did earlier um, on the channel, probably two years ago. Because it's not often that I actually have tomato worms. Um, but it happens. 
especially being in a new place like this, it happens. Okay, so that's actually all I'm gonna harvest. Got a nice little haul here. Um, and if it doesn't rain later, me and Steven may bring you back out tonight and do a, um, a tomato hunting video. So that'll be coming out soon, as soon as we can get that done. I wanna show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna move along in the garden and move along to the next section. So right beside our tomato patch is just the odd and end garden we've got kale here and then I've got two watermelon plants one there and then one down there these are our random green bean seeds and I believe we may actually have some we have to pick on that last little section down there and then here these two rows right here are pink eyed top crop um, some more those are yellow wax beans this is some hybrid corn um, I'm sorry, these are Bantam corns. Um, the one in the back, that is peaches and cream hybrid. And then the section right here are okra. So the first little section here is the kale. I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of it. Uh, I just about have to pick it every day. This is white Russian kale. And I do have the cabbage moss flying around so I do check it for worms and I wash these in the water and vinegar solution just in the sink so we do get them clean I usually don't find but maybe just one or two baby worms and I haven't seen a whole lot this year so you just reach in here and snap these off and they will keep growing There's a cabbage moth. I can't catch it. It's funny watching the uh, chickens trying to catch them. They fly through that pen and the chickens are just jumping up trying to grab them. So let's go down here. I need to check the green beans because they were, or they are blooming. And I need to make sure that I don't need to pick these just yet. Got some that need to be picked. So these beans I did, I just planted the seeds that I had. And yeah, they were pretty old. I think they were like two years old. So I wasn't really confident in the germination rate to begin with, but um, I wanted to use them up. If they weren't good, they weren't going to make anyways. So I just went ahead and popped these in the ground and what come up, come up and what we got off of them, we're getting off of them. So what I plan on doing in probably about a month, um, I am going to actually put green bean seeds, unless these are done. I'm gonna put green bean seeds underneath my tomatoes and let them grow over there. That way in the July sun, the tomatoes will kind of take some of that heat off of the green beans, allow them to grow. And if these get done, I can also replant these over here. And then that will ensure that we'll have enough to where I can can them for the pantry. Um, because these right here are not gonna be enough to can um, because they come up so randomly. So that's the plans in order to get some more green beans. Okay, so we got a nice little haul of green beans there. Um, I'm probably, we, we only like to eat them canned, which is like really, really cooked. Um, so I'm probably just going to stick these in the refrigerator until I get a, a good batch to cook and then I'll cook them all together. Gracious. 
Okay, so here's the bantam corn. And again, these seeds were kind of old. There's the peaches and cream. So now I do still have time to where I can go back in and seed some more. If something gets done where I can pull it out, I can, you know, put some more in there. Like if these green beans get done, they'll be done in the next month or so. I can go ahead and pull that out and plant more corn there if I wanted to. Because we have such a long, hot growing season. So those are the peaches and cream. And then down here we have our okra. We have those okra. Right here at the end of the corn, we have some milkweed and some accidental potatoes coming up. Right next door starts our berry patch. So we've got strawberries interplanted between the blueberry plants. One, two, and three. Um, we've got, yeah, those strawberries there. And so after the blueberries get bigger, then they'll just kind of shade over the strawberries. The strawberries will kind of fill in the ground cover and keep the weeds down. Right behind that row is actually where I have a, a red seedless grape and a white seedless grape. And then as they are getting bigger, because they're not going to produce anything this year, they may produce in the next, I don't know, year or two. Then um, while they are growing, I went ahead and planted a zucchini on the end. And then I've got one, uh, one struggling, <laughs> two and three cantaloupe in here. And again, this is not where I'm going to be harvesting a whole lot this year. So they're just going to kind of grow and take over over here. That is a blackberry plant there. Then I've got blackberry back there on the back row. And it's intertwined with rhubarb, which is getting established. So I'm not harvesting those this year unless they just get too big. And I just want to take some of the pressure off of the plant. I'll harvest some then. But these are blackberries we brought with us. And they are getting reestablished. I'm not having any berries this year except for just a T90 patch right there. I'll show you in a minute. Um, because the stalks you see that are growing or that are in the ground right there, that would have been this year's plant. But with us moving and me cutting them back so severely so they wouldn't get damaged in the move from the wind and the truck, um, they actually did not produce this year they produced next year's plant so that's what that's actually what you see here is next year's plant and we've got to come through here and do some blackberry pruning pretty soon so right here on this row is the raspberry row some survived some did not so we've got four at the moment we started out with 12 and that's okay because they will actually make runners and this will soon be filled in i've also got two zucchini there on the end because i have an abundance of zucchini plants for some reason so there's the berry patch so right next door this is going to be our zucchini um, row and I already see there's one um, these some of them I grew from seed some of them I bought um, on a sale that I found so they're kind of coming up at different times right behind it I have here I now just have one watermelon plant the other one down there seemed to have died it's, it was like right there but it seemed to have died so I've got this watermelon plant which is a crimson red and then I've got I only see one the one right there that has still survived beside the kale so I've got one out of two that survived <laughs> on both of these rows. But that's okay because these will spread and it can just kind of take over back here. Because right next door I have two dahlias, a butterfly plant. My bleeding plant, bleeding heart plant that was right there has now um, decided to leave us. <laughs> For whatever reason it didn't survive. And then this is the echinacea that I brought from our last house I had in the raised beds. And then we've got digitalis that I bought as a plant from Walmart. And then right here we've got some um, lavender. Right beside it, right there, is a stalk of sumac, which leads me to the next project we've been doing is clearing out some trees, which I don't, we're not videoing it, we're just doing it. But there is a large sumac patch over here and the roots have grown underground and they've been growing in my garden and I'm just having to pull them up and throw them back over there to let them die so I have some random sumac coming up as long as I catch them small like this they don't uh, break me out so I can just go over there and just pull it up as a root and just throw it and that's that so we're trying to get that under control 
But like I was saying, the elderberry plant, once this gets cleared out and we get it under control, probably this fall, I'm actually gonna put the, the uh, elderberry over here. I see some pokeberry back there. Y'all see that pokeberry? I might have to leave it. I do have wild blackberries in there. Um, we do have some honeysuckle that we are trying to leave. Um, so it's, it's gonna be kind of a random um, wild patch over here I guess you could say because that's our tree line that's the property line so I want this to kind of be cleared out but I do want it to have a purpose so we are doing the blackberries over here we're going to try to leave the honeysuckle like I said and then the random blackberries that are out there just for the wild so they'll leave mine alone but that's going to be cleared out pretty soon and that's where the elderberry is going to go to live and grow and expand so one more thing I have right here is um, some goldenrod which I also have goldenrod right right there I have some goldenrod right there as long as we don't tear it up <laughs> I'll have some goldenrod but I went ahead this is from the house the, the other house that we lived at we planted some because we didn't have some readily available to us uh, to make our medicine and stuff that we got that we sell to you guys if you want it um, that's the goldenrod patch that we have started in the garden. Um, so it's just there to be pretty right now. Well, I guess that's it. Here's our harvest. Got some tomatoes, <laughs> kale, and green beans. And we harvested some tomato worms. Fed them to the chickies. Chicky chickies. And that's why I put my chickens right here beside my garden. So I can just throw it over there into them. And they can have a heyday, help me keep pests down, and eat the stuff I don't want in my garden like bugs and rotten fruits. Oh, I got one more. I forgot this bed. <laughs> that dog will not drink out of her own water bowl, but yet she wants to drink the dirty water out of the wheelbarrow. What are you doing, Bobo? She's like, what? So, we have harvested almost all the onions. I have left uh one two three four that have actually flowered you see they're actually going to seed this is the seed i'm gonna let grow and harvest for my own seeds and then i've only got one two three onions left to harvest which i was just leaving them because um, they need to get bigger four or five there's five these i'll leave and let go to seed and then once they die off then i'll collect the seed pull the onions up and then they'll be ready to eat so since this has died, I am, I've got plans to go ahead and put more of the pine needle mulch on here. I also have two cantaloupes over here and they're just going to kind of fill in this area because it's just resting for the fall. And right beside it here, I have garlic. They have all fallen over. So I think they're about time to harvest them. I was trying to let them get a little bit bigger. Um, but these were store-bought garlic that I just put in the ground. They weren't seed garlic. They were just, you know, garlic from the store. Um, so they have fallen over. I pulled up one the other day and it was like that big. They're not very big and I didn't expect them to be, um, since they weren't actually seed garlic. So I'm going to pull those up pretty soon. And then right next door is the potato patch. So these are my seed potatoes. And over there, somewhere underneath that section over there are the store-bought potatoes that I chitted myself and used as seed. Now, both of these are the Yukon Golds. You see, these are dying off, but it's not from them being ready. It is from the lack of water that we were having and me trying to balance watering potatoes and not causing them to rot. So that's why they were a little bit yellow. I have pulled some up and they, they're about, you know, yay big. So I was trying to give them a couple more weeks, but it looks like some of them are actually starting to die off and they may starting, be starting to get ready. But they still look good. There's still some of them that's blooming. I may just have to pull them as they get ready. Now, as we move over here, let me see if there's still some in here. Where are they at? Now, I did have some romaine lettuce, but it looks like they have actually rotten. So those plants have went to rot to a better home in the sky. <laughs> I won't be getting any more romaine lettuce. Um, then here's the, the small little plants from the store-bought variety that we tried. I do have a few onions that are just growing small and slow. They're kind of covered up by the potatoes. So I'm not really looking to get a big harvest out of them, but I'll pull them up whenever um, I feel the need to. 
Okay, so now that's it. Um, the only other things I have growing um, are the three apple trees and the now down to one out of three peach trees. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got three apple trees. We've got the Fuji, the Gala, and the Red Delicious. They're all doing good. And then one out of the three peach trees are still green. Other two, might we might have lost them, but that's okay. I'll get more from my dad maybe later and go ahead and get them replanted or who knows, maybe not. I don't know. But we did what we could. And there's your garden tour. So it's starting to warm up around here. Thank you guys for stopping by. I'm going to head back inside with our harvest. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that because we are going to be using these vegetables to cook up some goody stuff in the kitchen pretty soon. I've got a really good kale recipe I've made about four times, but I haven't even videoed it yet, believe it or not. I just keep making it, keep eating it, and I keep forgetting to video it. So that'll be coming out soon. Stick around for that video um, and see what other goodies we are going to be pulling out of the garden. So here she is looking all pretty and green and she is... She's showing out now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Welcome back any of our past viewers, new friends. Welcome to the family. And we will see you on the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.